I have a blue lanyard, but then you can't see this London T-shirt. <laughs> oh, sorry, well, by the way, you, you just want to skip the question at the end of the talk. Okay, let's start. So, welcome back after lunch. Add geo-coordinates to your addresses. What does it even mean? I mean, we all know what geo-coordinates are. Um, my name is Andreas. Thanks, Debrem. I work for a company called Adjust in Berlin. We do about a thousand Postgres databases. A couple of people here in the room worked with me before. Um, I'm also one of the founding members of Postgres Europe, the organization which runs this event, and one of the board of directors. Uh, we also run a conference next year at Forstem. If you want to be there, it's, for, it's called Forstem PG Day. Uh, we have another conference which is called PGConf DE in May in Munich. And a couple more. Okay. Uh, this, the slides for my talk will be uploaded. I have a new blog, looks different now. Um, if you basically just search my name, there's a link on the top and I have all my slides up there. You find me on different social media profiles, most likely on Mastodon. Um, probably LinkedIn, some ice cream pictures on Instagram. <laughs> and as mentioned before, I work for Adjust and we are hiring, so if you do something with Postgres, let's talk. That's all advertising. Okay. Um, what does this talk about? So I tell you a little bit why we should have some features where we can resolve addresses to geo-coordinates. Um, then I'll show you how you can do this, most with OpenStreetMap. And in the end, we also want to verify, is this what we are doing there even working, or do we just get the wrong coordinates? Over the last 10, 15 years, location-based services got in our daily lives. Where's my mobile phone? My mobile phone is over here. Any one of you has a mobile phone? It has a GPS set, you have maps on it. If you want to find a restaurant, do you look at the yellow pages these days? It's gone. <laughs> no one uses them anymore. Use Apple Maps, Google Maps whatsoever. If you want to go from A to B, you're no longer looking at a map. You look at your maps and it tells you, okay, you go to the station and then you take this train or this bus. Tourist guides, if you want to go somewhere on vacation, weather maps, whatsoever. It's all location-based services underneath. Even if you post a picture of me on Instagram, whatsoever, it all has geotagged. What more? We also have more serious services, like if you call emergency services, uh, you probably give them an address. I'm like in a Clarion Hotel. How do they know? So need to figure out, okay, where on a map is this hotel? How do I get there? Okay. Anyone remember May 1st, 2000? Is anyone here younger than that? No. What happened on this date? Labor Day, yeah, in Germany, or in Europe. Remember this? <laughs> you, you used this before May 2000. If you wanted to find an address, you got one of these tour guides or road guides out. You looked into the index, okay, where's the city, on which page, where's the street? Do you even know how that works anymore? <laughs> May 2000, uh, 2000, yeah. Actually, that's wrong. It's not 2020, it's 2000. The US switched off the error code in a GPS signal. This is basically when all the GPS devices started working for anyone. Before that, if you had a GPS receiver, which was expensive back then, you had like a 100 meter accuracy, not very usable. Now it's like two meters, three meters. And with all of this, we got our exact position, and then we got all the services I talked about before. Another service, which I'm using today, is OpenStreetMap, which started around 2004. There's no exact date, at least I couldn't find one. 
it provides a free map of the world. Anyone can contribute to it, anyone can go on a website, change something, add something, add new features, add new data. Um, this got a bit of attention in 2012 and Google started to charge for their Google Maps services and then other providers joined in. These days, you can get hundreds of services based on OpenStreetMap. It's just a small collection here. I won't go into details. There are many more. So you have specific services for like, okay, which railways do I have somewhere? Which weather do I have somewhere? Uh, if I want to go running, which trails do I have somewhere? Specific maps for all of this. Okay, how can we use all of this to get coordinates from our addresses? There's a service for OpenStreetMap, which is called Nominatum. That's Latin for by name. And we can use this to, well, plug an address, any address, into Nominatum and see how good it can be resolved. It can also do the reverse. So we search Nominatum by giving it a latitude and a longitude. And it will give us the nearest object it has in a database. For this, we have three API endpoints. There are a couple more, but these are the ones we need. Search, basically free text search or some more specific parameters we can plug in and say, okay, give me whatever you can find for the string I provided. The reverse I just mentioned before, if you provide coordinates, give me whatever you find at this coordinates, the closest object. And then look up, you have an OpenStreetMap object ID. You can get all the data for this specific object out of the database. So. Simple query, we just say, okay, I want to query this, and then you plug in as a free text whatever your address looks like. Zip code, street name, city, country, county. Uh, you can also be more specific, so you can say, okay, this specific country, this specific street, all of them are optional. And then you plug all of this into curl. Off we go. That's my query string. Uh, this is Belgrave Square in London. I want to get JSON back, and that's my result. At this specific address, we have the German Embassy in London. Well, we have all we need, right? Let's plug this into Postgres because that's what we're doing here. So I have a Python function. I can't really do this in PLPC SQL because we need to do a network call and we need to use an untrusted function for this. Uh, the function itself is a bit bigger and just have any relevant parts here. So I want to return JSON, uh, Python function. I can specify all the parameters here. All of them have a default of empty, so you don't have to specify them. Whatever data you have, you can query here. Then we build our query string. It's nominatum here. We want to have JSON. I just plug in my query here, and then off we go. And I get my same address back from a database. Looks a bit complicated. I highlighted the important parts here. So this is my query. I have all the details here. And I get my latitude back, my longitude back. And it found, OK, this object is named Embassy of Germany in London. If I plug this same address into the OpenStreetMap website, you see I get the same address on a website, so it's correct what we're getting out of the database. It gives you it the closest object it can find. So it doesn't give you a list of objects, you only get one. If you want to find more what's around it, you need to play around with the coordinates or with the address. That's what it found, Embassy of Germany. Then I use the same address, do a research, a reverse lookup. I wrote the same function for reverse. Uh, reverse has a zoom parameter, how deep you want to look into the map. And this one is important. So I have zoom level three, which basically only gives me back, we are somewhere in the United Kingdom, which is not very specific. Let's zoom in a bit. 
Level five, oh, we made it to England. It's no longer only United Kingdom. Level eight, yeah, we made it to Greater London. We are slowly getting in there. Level 13, okay, we found the street in the area where we want to go. And finally, if I use level 18, it's the highest level we have in OpenStreetMap, we found our embassy. So it really depends which level you have. It always looks at these coordinates, but it gives you the closest object at this level it can find. Even though it's the same address, if you just use like level eight, it doesn't look very deep into the database. It just looks, okay, what is there at a specific level? It's basically the same when you go to the OpenStreetMap, you plug in coordinates, and then you zoom out, you can't see the embassy. You just see like, okay, this is London. And then when you zoom in at the same coordinates, you see, okay, more and more details coming up. Same address, level 18, here's my embassy. Couple of other embassies around as well. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> okay, we really want to validate if all of this is working. So we need to some data. I am one of the people who hold two German passports, but that's a different story. So I'm going to use the embassies of Germany as data validation. And I thought, yeah, maybe let's use this ChatGPT tool. Please give me all embassies. And it refused. I don't do that for you. <laughs> Not even useful. OK, so I went to the website of the German uh, foreign office. It's really hard to find all the data there. It's a JavaScript thing. You can only get like four embassies at the same time, and you have to go deeper into the names like AB and so on to find all the countries it has, so there's no overall list of countries. And the actual data is in a JSON structure in the code. We will see some examples. Uh, but most of the time it's incomplete. Sometimes it's just plain wrong. Yep, what an embarrassment. Some examples. So we have two embassies in Rome. One is for Italy, one is for the Vatican. And none of them are even close to the Vatican. We're spending just money on it. So what Google thinks we have an embassy in Benin and what the foreign office thinks we have an embassy in Benin is totally different. Lucky us, they are close together. <laughs> This is what Google thinks the German embassy is, and apparently it is. This is where the address is. I plugged from the foreign office website. That's literally all I got there. Well, it's about 10 kilometers away. So literally Google got it better than the foreign office website itself. Cameroon, we don't have a proper address on the website. So if I ask Google, I actually find two addresses. Maybe we spent money on two embassies in a small country, I don't know. None of them are really correct. About three kilometers away. Mexico City, we have an embassy at latitude and longitude zero. Anyone knows where this is? Yeah, south of Africa, somewhere in the water. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, the same. It's move forward, come on. <laughs> it's somewhere south here. <laughs> For Portugal, all we have is a city. We don't have an address, yeah? we don't have an embassy, I don't know. We occupy the entire city. <laughs> Turkmenistan, we apparently live in a hotel. <laughs> we pay an entire hotel, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so 
I actually tried to contact them about some of the details. So a year ago or so, there was a big announcement, big fuss, German, Germany is now on Mastodon. And the foreign office as well. Oh, I dropped them a text. Well, you have some problems there. Guess what happens? Nothing. <laughs> exactly, one way street. OK, anyway, I scratched all the data from my website. I had a big CSV file, plugged this into a database. Let's see how this works. Obviously, I excluded everything which is somewhere in the water because this is wrong. I have 151 embassies. We have a couple more, but not, not all of them are apparently on our website. Uh, 73 have addresses with coordinates in it, wallet coordinates, or what looks like wallet coordinates. Uh, for 146 of them, Google can find an address. So there are like five more where even Google doesn't know where it is. Okay, create me a table, load your data into a database. Why is this not jumping forward? Then I have my embassy table, so I have coordinates here. Uh, I have a set of coordinates for the actual address I get out of here. And I have a second set of coordinates for the name. I'll show you in a moment how this works. And of course, the Google coordinates for comparison. Um, that's just the load string, so I left it in here. If you look at the slides later, you can copy all this and do this on your own. But I will skip over the actual details here. Uh, once I loaded it, I compared the coordinates from the Foreign Office website to the Google coordinates and excluded everything which is closer than 200 meters together because it should be the same building or same area. We have some great differences here. I mean, 200 meter, 500 meter, yeah, maybe that's okay. A kilometer difference, 300 kilometer difference. <laughs> Not really cool. <laughs> okay, now I use the same function I used before, my Python functions. Um, my first set, I'm actually using a string, Embassy of Germany, a search parameter. So Nominatum has a chance to find the actual embassy where it is. And what you want to do is you only want to specify like the country and the city, because if you have the street and it tries to find the street and then there's no embassy, you don't get a result back. If you stay at the city level and say, okay, embassy, then it has a better chance to find the actual building of the embassy, even though it's not at the exact street name. And then yeah, I set my column I open Sweetweb name to this coordinates I get back. Well, same thing with the street name, so I no longer use for the actual embassy. I only use the uh, city, country, zip code, house number, and street name if I have this. So I actually want to find this specific address, no matter if it's an embassy or not. And again, let's compare the coordinates from a German embassy website to the name, looks okay. I only have like nine differences, and these two are even okay. Again, I have Ecuador, something is really wrong with the coordinates we have there. Again, I tried to contact you, but you're not listening. <laughs> um, if I look at the coordinates by address, it even gets a bit better. So I only have like seven differences between the coordinates on the website and the address. But remember this one, where we only have like the city, no street, no nothing. Why is the address I have here close to the address on the foreign office website? So apparently the coordinates are wrong as well, because it only looks like for the center of a city. OK, but. 75 addresses is only like too small, so we need more data. Um, we only have about 50% coordinates for all the embassies we have, so we need more. OpenStreetMap gets it slightly better than Google, and it gets it better if you can find for if you can search for an embassy, because it has something to work with. 
Um, some countries still have problems like Ecuador, 300 kilometers off. It's not really helping anyone. Okay, enter open uh, overpass turbo. That's a tool which you can use to query OpenStreetMap and extract data. Uh, you write a query, what kind of data you want to have. You define what the export should look like, maybe some filters you want to have. <laughs> and then you run this query, it takes a while, depending on the amount of data you have, and then you get the data back. This is my query. So I, I want to have all nodes, objects in a database, which are diplomatic. So basically any embassies around the world. I run this, takes like 30 seconds, and I get this back. This is every embassy of every country around the world, no longer Germany. This file is about 8 megabytes JSON. Again, I can use curl and JQ passes into a database. Um, so we kind of get a recursive problem here. I'm querying OpenStreetMap for data which I then want to verify in OpenStreetMap. <laughs> you see the problem? Uh, what I'm doing here, in every node, people can attach an address to the actual node, which is not the same as OpenStreetMap thinks the address is. I'll give you an example here. So we have these tags for the embassy, and then you have extra tags which specify the address. So this is what people think or say the address of the embassy is. And then we have the coordinates here. So what we are going to do is we are going to verify all of these addresses and seeing how close they are to the coordinates in a database. So I create myself a table to load this JSONB, import it into the database. And again, I have my embassies table uh, coordinates from what I imported, from nominatum, and then by address. Basically, one the same query. No, this is the import into the database, so I um, extract the data from the JSON I have, and then I basically split all of this up, extract the text, and get my data into my actual table. There are close to 10,000 embassies around the world, or diplomatic missions. About close to 5,000 of them have a city and a street name attached in text. So only about half of them. And if you want to do a reverse lookup, we really need to have a street at least in a city. Doesn't make sense to just look at a country because everything will be wrong. Looks complicated. What we have here is, again, we are looking for country, city, zip code, street number, and so on. Um, I'm separating this and doing this as single uh, address, and I random the addresses I want to look up, and then I do one lookup every 20 seconds. Otherwise, I have 5,000 addresses. I'm doing 5,000 lookups in one single transaction. If one of them fails, everything rolls back. So I kind of don't want to overload nominatum, that's why I do one lookup every 20 seconds times 5,000, takes a while. Keep it running overnight, doesn't matter. <laughs> Out of the 4,700 I had, I got 3,900, close to 4,000 addresses resolved. So they are like 800 something addresses nominated could not resolve to anything. This is when you get a null back, and this is when this once again. So at some point, your random select here just finds addresses nominatum can't resolve. So keep an eye on it at some point. There's no more updates. Cancel your query. 530 entries out of the 5,000 I had are over 200 meters away from the coordinates we had in the tags. Everything between 204 meters and 14,000 kilometers. <laughs> But on a median, it's only like 106 kilometers, so it's only a very few examples which are really, really far away where Nominatium finds the address, 
which is far away from the coordinates we have. And probably someone should go and look up which addresses are wrong, what's wrong with the tags in this OpenStreetMap object. I looked into it, but I'm not an account with If you want to edit OpenStreetMap, please only edit what you know, not what you think might be correct. Um, 3,500 entries are below 200 meters, so we can really say it's the same building or same area. Uh, about 3,000 are below 25 meters, so that's a really good result. If we conclude this, OpenStreetMap, if you want to look up addresses to coordinates, it's really powerful. So accept this few outliners we've seen here. Uh, really, we really got good addresses close to what we have. I mean, I used embassies and diplomatic missions here, but basically any object in OpenStreetMap which has addresses attached, you can use for this. If you know the type of object, like embassy, like ice cream parlor, it really helps if you also add this into the query to give Nominatum a better chance. Uh, the problematic areas I found at least in this example, are often countries where we also have bad infrastructure in general, like no streets, bad streets, no known street names, house numbers, etc. Um, unfortunately, one of the ways this is updated is when there's a catastrophe and the OpenStreetMap team goes in, like gets new satellite data, and then tries to update the map to help emergency services. Would be nice if we get more manpower on this, but that's just how it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and again, a German foreign office is not helpful. If anyone here has contact, so then please let me know, get in touch. Good. OpenStreetMap itself is free. Anyone can use it. This is basically free of charge, what I did here. Um, any, everyone can contribute to OpenStreetMap. So if you do not have an account, please get yourself an account. Go out, map what's important for you. Where you live, your area, parks, shops, whatsoever. There are a couple of applications which you can use for this. You don't have to go on the OpenStreetMap website itself and do all the details editing. Apps like Strip Complete or OpenStop. You just walk around in your neighborhood and then ask you questions. How many stores does this building have? What's the color of the roof? This kind of stuff. And you get a very nice map of where you're living. Oh, I should add a link. <laughs> yeah, I made this an extension. I will add a link before I upload these slides. Maybe. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, you're out of time, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. So uh, my question is, um, did you consider to try copy from program CURL instead of uh, use Python 3? Like, is it maybe simpler? You're talking about the actual data import. No, one, one, on, on, the, on the first slides when you were uh, using Python 3 to, 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 to run the... Oh, I'm not actually using curl for the Python functions. No. Too far in. So yeah. this actually sends a web request using Python functions to yeah, but nominate him. Did you think that we can use like copy from C URL and just not install Python 3 in the, in, in, in an untrusted language? Yeah, but you also need an untrusted language to run your query. You need to reach out to OpenStreetMap, which you can only do in untrusted environments. And then you run an external program and you need to deal with all kind of external input in your query. If there's basically any valid UTF character you have, 
in your query string. Don't try to roll your own encoding. <laughs> yes, a question. Thank you for your talk. Uh, did you, um, I've experimented quite a bit with uh, validating user input data via a self-hosted no manatum instance. And I found that depending on the country the user's in, also the quality of the lookups decrease. So for instance, I get, in my personal statistics, I get over 90% uh, of the user data resolved in Germany, but it's way less in France, for instance which is not really a problem about the infrastructure in France. I think it's digging a bit deeper. It seems to be a bit about conventions of addresses and how they're shortened uh, in particular. Do you have any alternatives to Nomina team to generally uh, add yeah. geolocates to user data or any other tips you can give? Are you just claim that France is third world country? <laughs> no. Um, in every OpenStreetMap object, you have this tags. Did I show them somewhere? Um, and the tags, anyone who is editing the object can add like street names in any language. So you can say, okay, this street name in language English is this. In language French is this. And depending on whichever language you use in your query, and the somehow matches all the tags, then the object can be found. Obviously, if there is no match in the data between the query string you're using and what's in the database, you won't get any result back. How you can improve this? Only way I can see is you have a local OpenStreetMap instance, and you roll your own parser or query tool and see what else data you can access here. Given that Nominatum is version 4 dot something now, seems to be complicated. So it, in the end, it all depends on the data which is in OpenStreetMap. Okay, any other question? Thank you. Thank you.